On today's episode, we'll be talking about my former career as an author, why Shabba is our new favourite word. And what we get up to if we're stuck on a desert island. Shabba. Shabba. <laughs> what, you mean our favourite child? It's like me. <laughs> and they wear them silly little cleats in coffee shops. What's that? <laughs> oh, don't get me started on the, these... Oh, I think I'll go for this one because this is for um, photographers and content creators. <laughs> He's um, become the spokesperson for UFOs. <laughs> and welcome to the Therapy Crouch with me, Abby Clancy. And me, Peter Crouch. Um, just, uh, I just want to, you know, for any of our eagle eye fans out there who might be uh, noticing a bit of difference in the set, we have took charge, I've took the plunge, and I had to move out of our house because, Ross, after you dragging them suitcases through my hallway with all our gear in, you know, over my new floor... You know, I thought I was going to have a heart attack. Yeah. So we've moved out of Casa Crouch. The Casa the Crouch. <laughs> and we're now in our new studio space. And thanks to Rowan Holmes, who have kitted us out with, you know, a very luxurious set, I'd say. It looks exactly the same. Like, it's... They've got the brief, haven't they? Uh, so good. Rowan, yeah, you know, if Rowan is the place to go if you want a bit of luxury. And I think they've, you know, delivered... The brief perfectly. Yeah, yeah, this is very comfortable as well. It's actually bizarrely more comfortable than an off couch at home. I know, but I think it looks great and it's kind of, you know, I feel like, you know, I've got a real job now. Mm. I'm going out to work. We're in the office space. It's our set. You know, we can get, you know, it's quite hard, especially now it's half term trying to record a podcast. You know, we can't keep four children, two cats and two dogs quiet while recording. So, you know, this is the perfect transition. And yeah, big shout out to Rowan who have, how does create the dream set? Yeah, great, great. Looks great. Um, happy with it. Um, Valentine's, I delivered. You delivered. You happy this year? I'm very happy. You know, Ross, the poems are back. Oh god, did you bring them with you? Uh, no, no, unfortunately. Don't not. worry, I'm sure I'd be memorised. Uh, <laughs> I got my white roses, my red roses, a little piece of sponge cape in a heart in that a heart? Peter cut cut out himself. That was, that was the night before. That was just what. Like, have, what have you done? Monday. That was what a have preamble. You <laughs> I'm just starting to get a bit suspicious. Why are you being so nice to me? No, mm. it's, it's like, you said to me, I take note of what you say on this podcast, and you know, I took note that you know you wanted the poems back. You wanted a little bit ro more romance. Mm. So all I'm doing is providing bit that ghetto romance. <laughs> ghetto romance. Pete, that came on in the car. And Pete said that was the um, the best album of all time. <laughs> Damage of all time. <laughs> I said it was, Rumours was a fantastic album. <laughs> I heard a rumour that you feel me. And uh, get a romance, Rumours. You know, I mean, there was a few bangers Body on there. like a race for me. <laughs> Can you share a drink of something? <laughs> what a tune. Belter. Do you, know what I think, do you know what I think we need to do? So going back to the, the night we had in the Devonshire, in the pub. Yeah. And, you know, you're allowed to pick your own songs and put them on. After a few drinks, I cannot remember one song other than Shallow. I need Don't to... we fucking know it. <laughs> <laughs> I need to make myself, a, 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 in my notes, like a playlist of songs that I can put on. So you can sing get... them? No, not so I can sing them, just so I can get the party started. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, I've got I've got some something to bring up today. Well, I just want to ask Ross if he had any stalkers first because <laughs> seeing as though he announced to the nation oh, yeah. where he was going on Valentine's Day and he is the most incognito sex sex object on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> stalkers no more than usual, I wouldn't say. I, I, I didn't notice any more than I would normally down the pub. So, really? fine for me, no complaints. I thought that was brave, but then people don't actually know what he looks like. So they know he's in there. He's the international <laughs> man of mystery. They know he's in there. But they don't actually know. So I'd be listening the Dorset Scouse I'd be listening out, the the be listening out to the, for the Scouse accent and the laugh. Yeah, because mm. there's a few people who have slid in to my DMs declaring their love for Ross's laugh. Yeah, and that's your DMs. Imagine what mine look like. <laughs> you are. <laughs> Imagine what mine look like. You're not even on the gram, are you? I know. I know. I know. I'm not. You need to get on it. I know. You need to get with it. I know. I'm down with the kids. You need to like, link, and subscribe. Talking of. Uh, talking of. <laughs> Of being um, with it. Um, oh, God. When we came in here today, we said, there's obviously a lot of young people in here working. And you said, oh, have you got a spare cart lead? <laughs> <laughs> no, because I and the whole room said, what? And one of them, Ari, I have to say, had to Google what a scart lead was. 
I thought they were still in play. I'm well, with you. you. Uh, sorry. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> He's kind of set you up there because I'll be honest, that well, was a two-way street. Well, I, 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 can you imagine me know what Scarlet is? Because I've got no idea what a fucking Scarlet lead is. But since Chris, we're now mid-Feb. <laughs> I ask all Pete, these technology Peter buffs. got um, the kids, oh, Santa got the kids a PlayStation. What, what and... from PlayStation 1? <laughs> Scarlet? The worst thing is he was calling it a petrol station. <laughs> yeah, he said, Dad, can you set up the petrol station, right? And then I was going, no, nah, I need the Scarlet lead, son. <laughs> so none of us had it right. <laughs> But I've been listening to this since Christmas, this scart lead. So when yeah. I come in, I thought, well, I got this, <laughs> there's wires everywhere. You must have a, a spare scart lead knocking about. What is it that we need then to set up this bloody PlayStation? HDMI cable. Right, so, so am I I've right? I've got a box labelled <laughs> in, you've seen it, Ross? Yeah, In I the have. cupboard in the kitchen. I have got a whole box labelled wires and leads. Mm -hmm. can, I, can I just clarify? It's a scart lead out of... Fashion now. Yeah, is there yeah. no there's no such thing as a scart lead? I don't even think they'd plug into a modern telly. Seriously? Oh, I don't think so. I wouldn't know. I think it's like something you'd put on the back of like an Atari or a What's PlayStation. An Atari? But... Yeah, like the old <laughs> school <laughs> games and yeah. stuff. Um I, I yeah, that's news to me. Mm. I, I I didn't know. I remember that word growing up though, scart lead or Sean always used to say it. it. Yeah. I think just I think it's hated my cable now. Yeah. Oh. Every, every day is a school day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you cleared that up. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm not going to be able to... Listen, I, I need a HDMI lead now to fix the picture of station. <laughs> Good job we've got Lee, our builder, coming around next week. It's just like, Lee, can you come and change a bulb? Poor Lee. Lee's the builder. Lee, I... can you plug out? Because obviously I've got all my furniture back now. Yeah. It's back. With a vengeance. With a vengeance, and I've moved stuff around, and something's not quite right. So... Andrew Martin has to come round on Thursday and just... To save the day. To save the day. <laughs> I bet he loves them texts. <laughs> Fucking hell. I'm like, Martin, I need you. My house looks weird. So I I've got to get something off my chest. Is this a wine? No, Ab's become the spokesperson for UFOs. <laughs> so this all UFO people are getting in touch with Ab and saying, um, yep, it's okay. I know you're not crazy. You're with yeah. us, sister. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's now... You're now the, the UFO spokesperson. Uh, do you know what? I'm happy with that. But the thing is, I don't understand why I was on the front of every single newspaper. Best. How I'm left shaken and terrified um, because of my encounter with a UFO. Mm. If you listen back to our podcast, I said, quote, I'm not saying it was a UFO that I saw per mm. se. However, it was very unusual. These light, three lights in a formation that all, you know, flew off in a different, excuse me, flew off in a different direction at the end. You know, it's not nice waking up to, in the morning on the front of the paper that I'm shaken up by UFOs. It's hilarious. Pete thinks could it's so worse. funny. <laughs> but it's, it could be worse. Yeah. Could be worse. Has been worse. <laughs> could be a lot worse. However, it just makes me laugh. Well, listen, you know, you said something that, you know, but people have resonated with it. And there's obviously a lot of, UFO is out there. Do you know what I mean? There's UFO. people that believe in it. And, you know, <laughs> they're, like called? Called UFO, they're called UAPs, aren't they now? But yeah, you, yeah. Yeah. Unidentified aerial phenomena. Yeah, there you go. Let's be calling so, an OAP. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you're, you're, listen, you've, you've uh, brought light to the subject of aliens and UFOs. This could be a whole new career move for you. Know, you could... Seems listen, like a lot of people. I'm are feeling into it. it. I'm feeling the alien, alien. Love alien love. <laughs> uh huh. There's a lot of love for you being the, you know, because they need someone like no, you I'm with a profile. That I'm going to get adopted. Uh, adopted. Adopted. <laughs> I, 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 I'm abducted. <laughs> you need a scart lead for that, don't you? <laughs> no, now I'm scared that I'm going to fucking aliens are going to come to me and get. Why? Take because me? you're talking about them. Yeah. Well, maybe they don't want to be found, and you're the one promoting their. Come and zap me, and I'll be lying in a field next to a dead cow. The thing is, it's not a field; it's always a cornfield, isn't it? Yeah, it wouldn't be it's a, a crop. It, it'd have to be a crop field because <laughs> aliens only go into crop fields. <laughs> Funny that when it, people who have like tractors who can make yeah. make circles in vast no, pieces of land. That's the only place they hang around. Even ET was in a crop field, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. He was in bloody thingy's back garden. Yeah, but Elliot's he, back he, garden. Don't you remember he went into the crop field? That's where he found them. He ran it? in. Yeah. It's like the aliens only go near crop fields for some reason. <laughs> Maybe that's what they eat. They can only get photographed by grainy cameras as well. Now that in this day and age we've got HD phones, we still can't we still can't get a clear picture. 
4K. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. 6K. <laughs> okay, so have you got any weekly wines for me? I've got a couple. To be so have I. Go have on, you, hit me you, then. Have you really? Well, it was the other day, obviously, we, I went down to McLaren, which was amazing, I have to say. It's in Woking. Uh, we met Lando Norris, obviously, on the on the Better podcast I do. I was calling him Lorenzo Torres. <laughs> <laughs> Lorenzo Torres. <laughs> wow. It's a great name. Me dad I wish was, I was me, called me Lorenzo dad was, Torres. My dad was like, Never heard of him. He must be a new driver. <laughs> Lorenzo Torres. <laughs> you, you got so. What's his name? You got crossed. Lando Norris. Lando Norris. Yeah, Lando well, Torres. Obviously, came, we had a great day. Mm -hmm. But I got the opportunity to drive a McLaren car at M M McLaren Technology Center. It's called, which was incredible. Saw Ayrton Senna's car um, that he actually won the the world championship in. Lewis Hamilton's car. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! It was it was a great experience, but obviously when I was driving, Ab knew I was driving. It was a rainy day. <laughs> right on a rainy day, she knew I was in a McLaren, Lando Norris. There's a bit of speed going on, and then she's called me and gone, um, "Have you sorted the life insurance?" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Wanted to know where I stood. <laughs> Anything happen? She called me. We saw right, the enjoy. <laughs> right, yeah, that's what, it's all, all covered. Put the pedal to the metal, Peter. <laughs> Make sure you beat everyone. Yeah. <laughs> no, Make sure I, you win. I was joking, but then I suddenly thought, oh, fucking hell. <laughs> it's not that wet, Pete. Get yourself out there, son. Enjoy. I haven't got a need for speed Oof. at all. No. No, I'm just not a, a, a fast driver. No. I'll say that again. No. Slow and steady wins the race. Exactly that. Mm. Well, I'm, I've normally got a whole uh, load of precious cargo, haven't I? <laughs> <Yeah>. My kids. <laughs> mm, that's true. And I also like to drive slowly so I can look in shop windows. <laughs> I've never seen anything <laughs> like <laughs> driving. <laughs> the driving experience yeah. was abs mad. Because yeah. like, I'm watching the road in the passenger seat, but she's not. And she's <laughs> driving. So she'll be like looking in shops and like <laughs> just, you know, just break and go, oh my God. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and like, there's a queue of people behind beeping. She's just oblivious. I just to... beeped them back. Fuck no, off! Yeah. Fuck <laughs> off! What? Green light piss. Do you remember that guy was beeping me loads, and I went mental at him. Wasn't it something on the roof? And he was like, "Oh, I was just telling you your um, hazards are on." I was like, "Oh God, I'm so sorry." Road rage. Yeah, a little bit of road rage. You would say like, "What the fuck do you want?" <laughs> yeah, literally. Fuck <laughs> off! <laughs> Fucking hell! <laughs> Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Fall off. <laughs> I'm proper scouts on him. <laughs> so today we missed the train. Yeah. Because Pete was trying to set up a new iPad, <laughs> which took from 7 a.m. till quarter to nine. So you gathered that we're not really too very technical. Just leave it to leave it. Setting up a new iPad. I tried. I'm trying. He's trying. So Pete was trying to set up the iPad and we needed more storage. And obviously when you go online, you can see, you know, it's five ninety nine a month for two... Yeah, yeah, whatever. Megabytes. Yeah. Like two, da, 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 da. two terabytes, right? And it said good for families. Yeah. Right? And, Pete was, and then the next one was, was eight, eight terabytes. And Pete was like, oh, I think I'll go for this one because this is for um, <laughs> photographers and content creators. <laughs> Being serious. Yeah. <laughs> one of the funniest things I think that's I ever come out of my mouth. Spat but, my but can you hear me out, right? I, please hear me out. <laughs> content creators? He's going to have three that, photos that. on his phone. <laughs> I don't want to be this person. So please hear me out. And you have to not interrupt because I don't want to be tarnished with this brush. Um, I don't think that I'm a photographer or content creator. <laughs> but the first one was two terabytes, right? And it said, I don't even know what a fucking terabyte is. But at first I said, good for families. And I said, great, we'll take that one. So, but it was I, it's so much storage that we didn't, it, we, it wasn't enough. So I said, we need to, we're going to need to go for this one. This one says photographers and content creators. And I've seen Ab's face <laughs> prick up and go, pardon? And I went, I wish I hadn't said it, but I had. And I, I don't for one second think I'm a content creator, right? I'm not a fucking dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but there's, even, if I, even if I was, right? Imagine if someone said to me, uh, what do you do now after football? I went, uh, just a content creator. <laughs> That's what you should fill in on your well, occupation. I'd, I'd expect, what, do you, what do you put I'd on your... I'd expect a punch in the face. Like if, if, if I, if what I said do that. you put on your occupation form? I, that's, what, that's my problem. All of it's twatty. <laughs> Author, oh, best-selling author. Yeah, it's all that's what you just said. Podcast then. extraordinaire. We just, we just met someone. <laughs> he didn't say he that. did. We just met someone in the bloody <laughs> tube who said, "Oh hi, my sister did the cover to your book." And then you know, I was talking about it to our John. He went, "Oh, I saw Kara did that," and Pete said, 
Oh, I have got multiple books. <laughs> I did not book say wanker. that. Yeah, what book did you say wanker. then? I'm not a book wanker. What did you say? No, I, I said that, you know, there was a couple I've of books I've done. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Don't get book jealousy. Oh, I haven't got book jealousy. Yeah. I haven't got book jealousy. Oh, I think we should bring your original biography back. <laughs> <laughs> we should bring, what was your novel called? Let's bring Stop. that one back. Stop it. A night with, what was it called? What's this? Oh, nothing. I've got a novel out. No way. <laughs> shut up. I've like, never heard of this. <laughs> oh, God, shut up. What what? You, hold on. You had a go at me call me a book wanker. Fucking book wankeress. <laughs> It's it's like ten years old. I brought a novel out. No, you didn't. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> oh, you never told me this. What was it called? Google it. I can't even remember oh, the name. I think it was called Wish Upon a Star. Because <laughs> I read it. No, it wasn't. Can someone Google it's it? It's called something mm. Wishing on a Star. Oh God. It was about Tell this girl who wanted to be a pop. It was basically me. Basically, yeah, yeah. It was. Can you just find out what it's called? It's China. called Remember My Name. Do you know what? Do you know Remember what we should do? Name. It's called you Remember have you My read Name. Read the chapter each week. <laughs> yeah, mate, hundred oh, percent, hundred percent. Right. So, oh, we've all done. We've yeah. all done right. things. Listen, we've listen, all done never, like, babe. you know, you were lying in a bloody bathtub of rose pet rose petals the other day. So you can't don't talk. deflect. Petal wanker. Right? <laughs> don't deflect. Just because you're a book wanker as well, and I've exposed you for being a book wanker, I'm going to get this book right, and we're going to we're going to read a chapter every every um, session. Oh yeah. It, it was Tappen. called "Remember My Name," and it was a fictional novel, mm -hmm. sl slightly. It was about a girl who wanted to be a pop star, and you know she fell in love with the uh, bad boy. Bad boy, bad boy football. Vin <laughs> Semi autobiographical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was... Basically, my life story. Yeah. Bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think I've ever been described as that. Well, I'll take it. Vin bad Diesel, boy. like Vin Diesel. Yeah. I described you as a bad boy this morning when you were ordering 18 terabytes on the online. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's just how I roll now. Like, two terabytes? Fuck it. <laughs> Give me eight because I'm content creating. <laughs> Bloody hell. Uh, right. So my trusty assistant has just uh, passed me a laptop. Thanks, Harry. Uh, <laughs> remember it's my not name. Rose before hoes, you know, on this pod. <laughs> remember my name, by Abby Clancy. Oh. Uh, since owning the stage in our high school musical, Jessica Malone has dreamed of being a star. Now 22 and singing Disney songs at children's parties. It's the closest she's come, which can have surprising benefits when she meets the gorgeous Jack Duncan. <laughs> Not only is Jack very easy on the eye, he's head Hung of... like a donkey. He's, <laughs> he's head of talent for Star Maker Records and impressed by Jess's beautiful voice. <laughs> Wasting no time, Jack persuades Jess to join him in London. Once at Star Maker, however, Jess is making more tea than music. Sold it to me. Always a waitress, never a guest at celebrity parties. Until the night that Jack's biggest star can't go on stage. Before she knows what's happening... My life. Jess has ditched her tray of canopies for a microphone and gives the best performance of Shallow <laughs> <laughs> she has ever given. It is slightly autobiographical. It's giving me Star is Born vibes. You know, you know it's, it's come from the heart. You know, I wrote this. I wrote it. Mm. It's it's my story. It is your story. And yeah. Write what you know. Write what you know. It's great. <laughs> it's great. Ah, oh, superb, babe. You know what? And, and I, as much as I'm giving up grief here, I read it from front to back and enjoyed every moment of it. Front to back. I'll yeah. read you from front to back. <laughs> you are a front. <laughs> uh, is it? Yeah, like, it did well. It was good. It was a good book. It was a, I enjoyed it. Well. You should definitely start reading that out in the pod. Just the odd chapter there and there, just for a little laugh. Oh, God. Superb. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. unreal. <laughs> is it? Love it. Can you just... <laughs> Ross is can gone. Just... Ross is gone. <laughs> We've lost him. 357 on Amazon. <laughs> Have you ordered one? Why, it's coming is, it, in hot. why is it £3.57 on Amazon? <laughs> I've got a good idea, Mike. <laughs> I, I thought it was great. It you know, a good book. You you know, know I might get my eye wiped in my pee. Great. Everything... 
<laughs> Everything is a part of your journey. It was right at the time. It felt good. It's, you know, it, it's escapism. Didn't do bloody um, Fifty Shades of Grey any harm or bloody Bridget Jones. Exactly mm. right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's escapism. What's her name? Who, who wrote Bridget Jones? Uh, are they worth reading now? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a couple of reviews. Oh, <laughs> Terrible book. Came up after about 15%. <laughs> You are joking. <laughs> really enjoyed this book. I don't read a lot, but I put, read that on holiday and really enjoyed it. Is the, the first casual, one saying? For the casual reader. It's good. Did the first one really say? Terrible yeah, book? terrible book. Finished after 15%. What do you mean 15%? Yeah, How it's would they know what one. percent they read? Really enjoyed this book. Hoping for another. <laughs> 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 Romance mixed with a desire. A fantastic, hard to put down book. Thoroughly recommend it. Pizza, sorry. <laughs> My weekly wine comes in perfectly. We missed the train, so we had to drive to a, a, another train station. Then Pete goes, oh my God! I'm like, whoa, whoa, what's happened? He's like, me golf clubs are in the boot of the car. So he's petrified that the car's going to get stolen mm -hmm. with his golf clubs in the car and said he'd rather lose it, um, his life than <laughs> lose these golf clubs. So... Then he was contemplating carrying the the golf clubs with him on the train and on the tube. And bearing in mind, these are custom made, extra length going on golf clubs. Mm. I could not believe the palaver out of you this morning. What is... Do you know how pathetic you are? <laughs> I was... Pathetic. You wanted them to get stolen, didn't yeah. you? What's, what's the matter with you? I just like think... it's, it means a lot to me. Like, what if you know all the shit stuff you like got? You know, I wouldn't want it to get stolen. You know, I I had um, an accident once when I was young in my mini, and I had this Burberry leather Mac in the car, <laughs> and my car got taken away to the pound. <laughs> and when I got it back, my leather Mac was gone. Mm. Oh my god! Never been so upset. I got we got a car stolen once, right? I always remember this. He, well, I went to pick up from the pound. Charlton friggin' pound and I had to go miles there got there and the cheeky bastard who stole the car had taken his missus out for dinner <laughs> and, then, oh, yeah. and then just left it so he's, he's, he's obviously nicked it There's a, his missus coat's hanging up in the back like a big fur coat <laughs> And all his tunes, all his tunes were all like receipts? lined up, and there's a receipt for like dinner. So he's gone. I'll have that. Nicked it. <laughs> took his miss took a girl out, and then just did, still wear did, that coat today. Yeah. Yeah, just, <laughs> and then just left it. Oh, at least got a bath. They were like, whose is this coat? Like mad. Then there was receipts. Like just mm -hmm. that's just cheeky bastard. Mad, cheeky. Yeah. Yeah. More from the Blackpool. Got so stolen, yeah, Ross, didn't Yeah. It? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That old oh chestnut. Nightmare. Went to the pound, picked up the next day. It's actually a really good um, decoy of an affair. Tell yeah. me about it. Oh my God. You're going to look into that now. <laughs> Bet you did. Don't yeah. look at me like that. I wouldn't have said it on the pod if I did. I had the funniest time when I was pregnant and I went out with my friend Lib. Mm. We went for lunch. Boozy lunch for everyone else, not me, because obviously I was pregnant. And I'd park my car in a road and there was 10 of the same car as mine in the road. Mm. And my car had gone and I was stone cold somber. And I was like, Lib, that's not my car. So I was, she made me like beep every car. And we got papped doing it as well. Like paparazzi took pictures of us. And it was like, dude, where's my car? I mean, like that. <laughs> I was like trying to hold her up because she was so pissed. I was pregnant. My car got towed away. It was in the compound. <laughs> Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. it's Baby thing. brain. Baby brain, yeah. That's so unreal. Funny. I've been getting a lot of love for my um, Welsh national anthem singing the other day, Ross. Do you know about this? Yeah, I so. um, my dialect was correct. I had so many Welsh Babe, people. Big I up to my um, my Welsh climb. fans, <laughs> <laughs> to my crew, <laughs> Gwilard. <laughs> I do like Wales. Yeah, well, listen, you know, of me, Wales listen, as a child. I sang it. Apparently, I sang it quite well. They said. 
The do dialect do was little, correct. Do you want to do another little rendition? Do you know Miss Dyson got in touch? I did see that, yeah. My old teacher, Miss Dyson, got in touch. Apparently it was her that taught us it for Mr. Evans' leaving do. So she t she taken the credit for it? No, it was a joint decision. Pretty sure Mr. Evans, but everyone's, all the Welsh people that listen to this podcast are loving Mr. Evans for like making us all English learn it. Because mm. there's a lot of Welsh people out there, I didn't realise, that actually don't know it. Do you, do you know the um, British national anthem? Yeah, of course. I used to sing, sing it. it quite, yeah. <laughs> I used to sing it quite regularly, in fact. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm playing for England. You do it every game. I think that's a funny thing about, the, you know, when you go abroad, so we go into like a city break or something and we get in a cab and we're like, what's that building there? What's that? And like all the cab drivers and the locals know the, all the history mm. about their particular city. But if, if I went to London and someone asked me what that, I'd be like, I'm going to fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> do, you know, do you know so true when you get, when, like, when you do go from the airport You just cab, expect them to be historians? They tell you exactly. Oh my like, God, do you remember that <clears throat> black cab we got in the other day? We got into he this black, he was unbelievable. I'll set the scene. We got into the black, this black cab, torrential rain again. Kids were kicking off big time. We were on our way to see Wicked. Jack was cried for two hours and we got into this cab and he said he was changing his, um, his kind of profession into like a, a black cab tour guide. Mm -hmm. I wish I knew his name. Oh, he and, and his he had card. an app, but we lost it. Oh. And it, it, so you get into the cab, you put the headphones on, you drive around and he'd give you a tour. But he, he was talking about, what park was it? And one of the kings had an affair. Green Park? Maybe? Green, Green Park. Park. It was Green Park where they... So one of the wives had... It, the, the he had an affair mm. and gave his love interest flowers. So his wife said, I don't want any flowers in the park. That's mm -hmm. why it's called Green Park. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah, but so many, like... And I was trying Snippets to... Snippets of history, yeah. I was trying to listen to all the info through screaming kids and fighting and out... I was just like, I just wanted to boot the kids mm. out the cab. I think, I think one of them <laughs> as well. One of them as well, which is quite interesting. I think this is true. Don't quote me on it because it might not be the right king. But I think it was Henry VIII. And the reason why there's parks in London is because so he could ride his horses. No, it wasn't that. It was, it was, um, it was, no, it wasn't. I remember that bit. It was, um, it was definitely that. He, he liked to hunt the deers. Yeah, I know he was so, so they, on horses. Like, so he used to hunt on horses. So he used to, so that's why there's deers in all the parks because they. Deers in all the parks? Is there, there's no deers in Hyde Park or, or Green Park? Only Richmond no, Park. No, we're talking about for, and, um, Hampton Court. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but like what I'm saying, so you're telling me that those deers had been bred from Henry Lake so he could, when he was hunting them? Yeah. No, he rode horses in the parks, that's what it was. And he did, he'd hunted in them as well. They, he, he wanted a place to hunt, or I don't know if the word's yeah. hunt, but he wanted a place to. Look at dear. <laughs> oh, anyway, fuck off, Pete. it was really. You're trying to make me out to be. Sh no, because you having a go at me, telling me that I was completely wrong. Yeah, because he didn't, didn't want to just ride. Why the don't hook? we put it to our listeners? You know, when you're you. completely wrong, I just ignore the fact that I know you're wrong I'm and, let, you. and let you crack on. <laughs> uh, audience wines. Hey, Abby and Pete, absolutely love the pod. I listen in, in work, and I always worry people are watching me whilst I'm in stitches, laughing at you both. My weekly whine is the fact that my partner thinks it's acceptable. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> wow. <laughs> my partner thinks it's acceptable to stick his finger up my bum at every opportunity while shouting Shabba <laughs> from the film Dirty Grandpa. Not a bare bum. Any, no, 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 I think it's a jokey one. Uh, thank God. Uh, any opportunity he gets, uh, I could be picking up the kids' toys, putting wash, washing away, uh, walking Shabba. up the stairs, <laughs> the list goes on. It's got to the point now where I'm constantly walking around with a clenched arse. <laughs> <laughs> the worst part is the kids have even started doing it. We were in Asda the other day and I bent over, picked up a, a, some bread from the bottom shelf, my three-year-old <laughs> stuck his finger up my bum and screamed, Shabba, in public. <laughs> Safe to say people weren't too impressed. Chloe from Swansea, amazing. Your fella's an absolute genius. Yeah. The thing, I hate a bum slap. <laughs> I think it's one of those things girls moan about, you but when, it, when it stops, mm. it's a bit like, why don't you slap my bum anymore? You hate the bum slap? No, it's, there's a time and place. I would, I think a finger up the bum slap, Shabba, I think that could get annoying. But I do that to you. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna, you do do that to me, actually. You never complain. I know, yeah, I always do that. You do you do know. that, yeah. Like, obviously, fully clothed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Oh, God, heaven forbid. <laughs> heaven forbid, yeah. I slap your ass every time I walk past you, I think, don't I? Do you think? Yeah, but that's Most... degrading. Is it degrading? Mm-mm. 
I mean, that's all part and parcel of being in a relationship. If I can't do that, I might as well go and fucking play golf somewhere and, you know, not be married. It's a huge part of being married, I think. Bum slapping? Yeah. I think it's... <laughs> Am I on my own it? <laughs> no, I agree, yeah. I just wouldn't say it out loud. I, mean, <laughs> I mean, if you, I just think if I it's, 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 if it's I an saw your, pet, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's affectionate. It's I think if I saw your ass and it, can and we it, stop saying ass? What, 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 what do you want me to call it? Bunda. Ring piece. Booty. <laughs> Booty. <laughs> oh, I've got the giggles now. Same. I've got the giggles now. Um, I, I don't. I think it's a, it's a big part. It's just little touches, isn't it? If I walk past you and I want to like I want to touch you. If I walk past you, know it, you, it is it is um, being tactile. tactile. Oh, wow, is a thing because like if we have an argument and we get into bed and we're like one side and the other side, it's not nice. Like not even like just touching each other. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that. it's important. It's, part it, of it. it's like it can mentally upset you. That yeah. Well, where do you stand L on lack of touch? Where'd you stand and on? And it doesn't Shabba. have... Shabba. <laughs> that'd, Shabba. Be, that'd be so annoying. But you know what? It's quite funny. I think, like, I think we'll Shabba. Call, we'll do at least one No, she today. should go, yeah. Mr. Loverman. Oh, that's good, yeah. yeah. Shabba. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think it's... I, I think I, he's I, a I genius. Could... I, want, I, want some, I want an email yeah, but I can from just, him. Yeah. I can just relate that to when, it, when I'm getting ready, get out the shower, get into my little area to put my makeup on and Pete comes over and like hugs me and stuff. I'm like, go away. This mm. is my zone. You are not allowed in it. <laughs> okay. Um, hi, Pete and Abby. This is more of a subconscious thank you than a whine. Last week I was watching my 13-year-old son play football like most of the British population on a Sunday morning. I realise this is football related, but bear with me, Abby, as I'm sure a lot of your listeners can relate. This particular Sunday morning, my son's, my son's team had been given a referee who must have been no older than 15 himself. It also turned out he was getting assessed by someone from the FA. Now, throughout the entire duration of the game, the, opposition, the opposition's coach was moaning about every decision made by this poor young lad. He was the type of bloke that was probably shit at football himself and he lives this wannabe football career through his child. We all know the type. He was probably wearing shin pads underneath his tracksuit. He's a listener. <laughs> at the end of the game, I was walking to the car with my son and I happened to pass this div as he was giving his opinion of the referee's performance to the assessor. Now, usually, I'm the type of guy who goes to watch, stands away from the other opinionated parents and lets the kids play and the coaches coach. However, on this occasion, I couldn't help myself. He was spouting all his... He was spouting all his verbal diarrhea to the assessor and I found myself sticking up for this young lad and simply saying, you want to grow up, mate? His reply to this was to shout abuse at me as his head nearly span off his shoulders, to which I simply replied again, grow up. You perfect, could see him getting more and more annoyed. So for good measure, as I drove away, I gave him the third grow up. Oh, so thank you for the gift. So thank you for the gift of grow up. I'm sure I ruined his Sunday lunch, which is the least he deserved after his treatment of this poor young ref. Love the pod on my dog walks. Perfect use of grow up. Yeah. And if you're you can't come back from it. There's no comeback. There's but you know what? Absolutely no comeback. Good on him for standing up for what's right. <laughs> Something that I'm always in trouble for. Standing up for do you know, you know what though? This is um, you know not to go so technical into in, like, into football, but at the moment, right? There's a serious lack of ref referees, like who on a Saturday and Sunday, because they're getting abused by like parents and people on the sidelines. Imagine if you're say a 16, 17 year old kid and you want to be a referee, right? And you go on a park on a Sunday, you get absolutely abused. Yeah, but, it's not a job I'd want. It's like that. There are referees of the future. Do you know what I mean? And like, listen, you know, referees. They were my favourite people when I played, but we need them. You know, those people that abuse the referee on a on a They should weekend, get penalised. I mean, that's, you know, he's right there to, to say, grow up to him because he to needs to. You know? off, never mind grow up. No, listen, there's, there's a shortage of, of refs so we need to respect the ref. Yeah, I agree. Right, hi both. My weekly wine is a bit of an old but gold one, but I wanted to bring a bit of a well-deserved negative attention to the pain in my arse that is cyclists in around London. Oh, you like this one, Pete? Correct. I'm with you on this one. Uh, I think that's a sign of getting old when you start 
going, oh, look at that bird. What a lovely bird that is in the tree. And then moaning about cyclists. And do you think? <laughs> what did that's we what say? I do what now. did we that's say my today? My favourite pastime. <laughs> we said something today, and I thought, God, we're getting old. I think it was when you said, let's go to the cinema at night. And I was like, oh, God, can't do that. Oh, God, no. You know, we'll be asleep by half night. <laughs> oh, God, no. All right. Well, listen, not only do they act like they own the roads, cutting lanes and jumping on pavements whenever they see fit. All the while, avoiding playing any bloody road tax, but it's their general arrogance, air of super superiority that really gets me. They think they're cool and trendy doing their bit for the planet, when in reality, they are just twats in lycra. <laughs> and don't get me started on the ones that cycle on the pavement. The amount of times I've nearly been knocked over by one of these electric, silent, assassin electric bikes. Uh, it's beyond me. Ban them now. Well, I, I well, do I do have an issue with, with cyclists. And it, it, and it's not, I don't mind, like, I know they all want to be, get fit and, you know, it's a good way to, you know, you know it's fuel good for the emissions. environment. There's lots of positives to it. But what my thing is, you don't have to be a knob. You literally don't have to be. You, you can still do that and be, and, and be safe. Mm. You don't have to be a knob. You don't have to, like, you know, try and run people over on the pavement. You don't have to um, go through red lights whenever you feel like it. You don't have to do that one. And I know the law says to do it. The one where you double, you double bike, yes. right? That? Double bikers go are... two strides. How do you two. know what the... Because the I bike... see them. They fucking double bike. They do it to me on a country lane and you're driving and, they, and, and you go... Just go for one second, just like that, and then I'll get past you. But they, they go, no, no, it's the rules. <laughs> it's, they told us to do it. You're like, oh, piss off. Mm. And they wear them silly little cleats in coffee shops. What's that? Oh, don't get me started on the, these cycling coffee shops. And you, they stroll in in their cleats and go, uh, I'll have a lock of frapper, 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 it's a frothuccino. A frothuccino. I mean, a double where, with double do, oat milk. Where please. do you stand on like Hell's Angels? <laughs> well, not fine. Cyclists, are they? Motorcyclists. It's, I know, but they're cool, aren't it's they? It's the issue is where we live. There's a lot of cyclists, and I and I and I get it. I I do get it. And but they're they, they, the part part. It's like, of the, it's like Pete was talking about like TV <laughs> people the other day, saying they all wear like people who work in TV all wear the same outfit. Mm. Like a pa Patagonia T-shirt with a cargo short. <laughs> and they all live in Clapham. Yeah. <laughs> so true, I'm yeah. sorry. I know that when you turn up, the, the, the director's going to have vans on. Um, you know, the, the grip's going to have cargo shorts with, lo with a massive belt with loads of stuff on it that he needs. He'll have loads of tattoos as well. And then the director will have kind of like... They're kind of baggy, combat baggy trousers combat with, with vans. Cords. And if it's cold, it'd be Patagonia um, <laughs> jacket. And which is, you know, great, but that, you just know that's going to happen. Yeah, but if you think about it, that's where people, you know, people get the style inspiration from, you know, who they hang around peers. with, where they go. Peers, mm. not Morgan, <laughs> just normal peers. <laughs> and um, if you're going to work with these people and go, oh, that's a nice T-shirt. And yeah. then he's got, a, and then, a, you know, a style. Is like echo chamber, like a bubble. Yeah. No, anyway, just last thing on cyclists. Uh, also, you don't have to wear lycra. Like, it's not. You do, Pete. You, no, because you it's don't. It's like saying I'm going to play football in a pair of ballet shoes. That's it absolutely nothing. not the case at all. It because is. Because with Bradley Wiggins, for instance, right, he's shaving 0.3 seconds off, right? He needs lycra on. He needs to be aerodynamic. Mm. Bob from down the road, right, who goes a cycling on a Saturday, Sunday, doesn't need to shave 0.3 seconds off. He could wear, like, uh, shorts and t shirt. You can wear a hoodie. Yeah, but if you if you, you fell, you can wear a rain jacket. You can wear his jeans. Rain jacket. It does. It literally doesn't matter. I totally disagree with that. Why? Because you can't. You got. You so can't... if I went to you, babe, I'm gonna wear lycra today. You, you put a fucking whole outfit on to go to golf. You've got a belt. <laughs> you wear, You put a little badge on and everything. You have. A, a, you know. You're, you're not wearing a Nike t-shirt or a hoodie to play golf. Yeah, but the rules of golf are that you have to. It's etiquette. You have to it's wear etiquette the of the sport. What's whatever sport that would be. But lycra looks ridiculous. If I wore, if I came down fully in full lycra, and said, "You do. You see wear you later, my leggings underneath, <laughs> underneath my trousers, so you can't see them." Well, as soon as I walk out the door, you don't. You, you can't see. You're not playing lycra. golf in jeans or a hoodie because I'm not allowed. I wouldn't be allowed in the golf club. They don't allow you to do it. It's you have to wear. You have to. My I have to wear that. 
<laughs> but my problem is... Do you love it? I, listen, yeah. it's golf. You have to wear, like you do, you have to... Like, they won't let you in the clubhouse without it. You've got to change your shoes at some places, you know? You've got to wear a suit and tie in some places. But what I'm saying is, on a Sunday, going up Box Hill with your mates, you don't have to wear Lycra. I think you do, because you want to be as close to your own skin as possible. Do you know what I mean? Fair enough. I don't hate all cyclists, and I don't want you to... to I always I want do. to smack the bum now when you're at the light. <laughs> and there's like a bike in exit. Yeah. I just want to put my hand out the window and slap the bum. You always say that. Shabba! Like, oh, shabba! <laughs> shabba! But I don't know. Sorry, I, mate. Just this edge comes over me. like, And the yeah. only reason I don't do it is in case they fell off the bike and got injured. But mm. I'm just desperate for a little arse slap. Mm. You've always said that. I, I'm scared that people are going to start doing shabba now. <laughs> Can we just say uh, this podcast does not condone <laughs> shabbering <laughs> cyclists? <laughs> yeah, so we were going to do Ask Us Anything, but obviously there's a lot of stuff that we found quite amusing there. Mm. Um, so I'm going to do it anyway. And what it is with Ask Us Anything is like people have got in touch, loads of emails, and we're going to answer their questions. Okay. Right? Okay, so Ask Us Anything, we have to be as honest as possible. Yeah, right. No holds no. barred. Okay. Okay. Alexis says, if you guys were a couple from a sitcom, which one would it be and why? I've got mine. <gasps> I, I know mine. Oh, God. What's Will and Grace? Will and Grace. <laughs> Rodney and Cassandra. <laughs> yeah. All day. Yeah. All day. We'd be Will and Grace, but you wouldn't be Who's gay. Will and Grace? <laughs> Will and Grace. <laughs> Who are they? Oh, I think 90s sitcoms, good. Oh, I Will know the one. The Americans, like friends kind mm. of thing. With the red hair. Will and Grace, I think, because they love each other. I know he's gay. Well, obviously you're not gay, but I don't know. We've got the sorry, we've got a great Dane joining us with the phone in its mouth. <laughs> wow! Just for a bit of um for our audio listeners, <laughs> thank God this is not in my house on my crane rug because bone. we've got a, a raw bone and a great Dane chewing it on the white rug. <laughs> Rodney, going... Rodney and Cassandra, I think I like Rodney, and um, not so much Cassandra, mm. maybe, but. Um, you, Will and Grace. I, I think, think you're closer to Rodney and Cassandra than Will and Grace. I'll be honest. Brad Pitt and Angelina. But they're not a sitcom. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> also, well, so that would have what been about, fine. What about? <laughs> what about? <laughs> you know, no, it's just not a sitcom. No. Is that what the about, only reason? Um, <laughs> what about um, Monica and Chandler? Mm. Ross you know, she's yeah. neurotic. She's neurotic. Yeah. He's un. He's totally unfunny. <laughs> If you guys were in a Freaky Friday scenario, what would be the first thing Abby would do as Peter and vice versa? Um, I think if we did a Freaky Friday exchange of each other, we'd just carry on as usual. What's a Freaky Friday exchange of each other? What is that? <laughs> so if your brain goes into air body and vice versa. Oh, okay. So we just swap. I'd be you. Mm. Cool, I'd have loads of fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Oh, he's just the lower the turn. <laughs> No, I think we should just date each other and see if we actually like each other the other way around. Wouldn't you go and hang around with like the other one's mates and see what they really think of you? No. Oh, I don't give a fuck what his mates idea. think of me. <laughs> that's a great idea. Or that's like, nice, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean? I'd do something like a bit more conniving. No, oh, no, I wouldn't. Just date each other. You do that every day anyway. It's so boring. That's so true. <laughs> that is so true. I'd make a just cottage pie that. and we'd go and sit in the kitchen. Yeah, we just do what we do. And you, you literally, I'd just no, go out. No, I think that'd be nice to experience each other the other way around. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day. It's about Freaky Friday. I don't wow. mean... <laughs> you are freaky. Quite like I don't mean like that. I mean, just... To like date each other, but you as me and me as you. Let's not show like... ourselves the other way around. <laughs> not like that. Absolute freak. <laughs> right, moving on. <laughs> Next question. Abby, what is your perfect tea and cake flavour combination for bed? I like a ginger and lemon and a Scottish shortbread myself, Neil. Mm. I know. You're a Victoria sponge and a cup of tea, right? Mm. Would you have Vicky sponge before bed? Uh, every day. Really? She loves a Victoria sponge. I actually just like the sponge. Mm. I was expecting you to say rich tea. Yeah, and rich tea. And even plain. Plain and buttery. <laughs> <laughs> and normal tea, not flavoured. No. Gotta be it. You know, Pete makes the most incredible cup of tea. 
Because even now... She thinks e- I'm like 10. No, it's just really... <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, uh, I'll time you. Go, go get me the remote, I'll time you. Uh, no, oh, but- seven, eight. <laughs> no, but I stun... I, no, uh, at night if we go to bed, because sometimes if we get we get a little bit picky. Yeah. Uh, around nine mm. and go, oh, should we go down, make a little piece of toast? And then I go, I'll have another cup of tea. And Pete goes, oh, you're just doing that. And I'm like, no, I'll come with you. Yeah. I'll literally come with you, stand next to you and do it. But I don't like my own tea at all. It's too milky and horrible and I can't change it. It's too thick where you make the best tea, genuinely. Bizarrely, like, I know what she's doing, but it still makes me feel good. Yeah. <laughs> it's not It's not a, a ploy. I do make the best tea, don't I? <laughs> you know, like, when, I, when I leave this and I know that, like, you lot will think I'm a twat, when I go home, I go, I do know, do I? Yeah. <laughs> you do, though? You do? You do? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, babe. Okay. Okay, next one's on oh, Ruby. On. This one's good. Uh, Ruby says, um, is there a reason Abby still prefers to use her maiden name? Interesting. Fish. I don't use my maiden name. People just use it for me. You know, like they write things like I am terrified of UFOs yeah. and all the other shit. People just call me Abby Clancy. I am technically Abby Crouch. However, my passport is still Clancy. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. <laughs> no, <I'm joking. laughs> my um, passport is still Clancy because the guy who renewed my passport for me wrote mm. Clancy instead of Crouch. But I am Abby Crouch. So everything proper is Crouch. So you're an official Crouch. I'm an official Crouch. Mm. Although do, I do. Unlike this pod, you do say, hi, I'm Abby Clancy. Don't and you? I, I don't know. Well, that's my name, isn't it, really? No, you, you, I think you just it's just never been changed, has it, properly? You know, if I sign stuff for the school, it's Abby Crouch, Mrs. Crouch. Yeah, I've heard you introduce yourself as Mrs. Crouch. Um, yeah, formal things seem to be Mrs. Crouch, don't they? Formal is Crouch, fun is Clancy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I prefer the word Clancy to Crouch, though. I always say this, don't I? It's a nicer word. Mm. Anything with an E on the end is nicer. It's less blunt. Mm. 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 But that's like our... Everything in, in life, isn't it? I like, love the cake. Everything to do with you is good. And anything to do with me is shite. <laughs> Stand up. <laughs> where we are in life. Any bad habits the kids have, got it from you. <laughs> okay. What is the most embarrassing thing you've ever caught the other person doing, apart from putting the bins out in their rosy Huntington Whiteley dressing gown? <laughs> That's not embarrassing. I like that. I dig that. Probably today. Which is what? Well. When I was talking about the content creation. <laughs> Yeah. I genuinely can hand on heart say Pete does not give me the ick in every circumstance. Like, you know, candy shop at, at its full cap- lung capacity, <laughs> knowing every word was a bit, you know, suspect. <laughs> but nothing, that, nothing that you do, suspect. nothing that you do em- embarrasses me. Like, I just laugh and then we we'll laugh together. Mm. Do you guys have any tattoos? If not, would you ever consider getting one and what would you get? I don't have any tattoos. <laughs> no. Peter? No. I've, I, it's one of those where it became, obviously every single footballer seems to have a tattoo. And I, it kind of became my thing to kind of not have one. Mm. So you know, like when you look around, just kind of, I, I thought tattoos kind of, it was like you kind of stand out a little bit. You know what I mean? And I stood out by not having one. Yeah. And I thought, I, I'm happy with that. No, I, I don't think it's that. I well, think, that's, that's what I was doing. That's my reason. But I, I think if you don't get one when you're a teen, you're then you don't. Go, yeah. And then it, you might get one uh, for a midlife crisis kind of thing. <coughs> you know? Yeah. We, we've often talked about it, but then I always think, you know, everyone gets like tattoos of each other's names and that always like split up or whatever. Mm. I don't we, know. We talked about like having one there or something, haven't we? One mm. each. I just think I'd look like a twat. Yeah, you would. 100%. Have you got a tattoo? No, I haven't. No. Mm -hmm. I've thought about it as well, but I don't know what I'd get. My brother's got a prawn with wings. (laughs) Which is just ridiculous. Yeah. You know why it suits some people, you know what I mean? Some people look great, but I I just think... God, some people... I don't think I'm that that person. Mm. You're more elegant Italian Riviera chic. Chic. Italian Riviera chic, yeah. Mm -hmm. Murphy Coast. My vibe. I'm I, I, Coast. I'd quite like a tattoo, but I don't like my skin. So I think if you've got nice skin, you can have a tattoo, but I've got like freckles and stuff, so I don't know how that would go with a tattoo. Mm. Well, cover them up. I like a tattoo on clear skin or like tan skin. Mm. Who are the kids more most like personality-wise? Abby or the big dog, you said? 
Um, me, I'd say. Thought you might say that. <laughs> <laughs> that was, if I had to guess, <laughs> I'd, I'd say I'd say you, you'd say that. Yeah. Well, what would you say? Would you say you? I think you? Liberty's a lot like you. Exactly, the, the most fun child we've got. <laughs> exactly, our favourite. <laughs> <laughs> what you mean, our favourite child? It's like me. <laughs> Sophia's like you, moody. How am I moody in any way? <laughs> um, I think Johnny might be probably a bit like me. Johnny is like you, and sensitive. Just nice Timid. in general. Um, and Jack's probably a bit of a mixture of both of us. I'd agree with that assessment, I'd mm. say. Mm. Sophia's one of a kind. Yeah, she's a lone wolf. She's a lone wolf. Yeah, I think Sophia's probably a bit of both as well. So Jack and Sophia a bit of both. Yeah. Lib you, Johnny me. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. Mm. Have either of you felt the other is not spending enough time together when you were both at the height of your careers? That's basically saying that we're in fucking decline now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true though. <laughs> when I was away with football and things like that. When we first got together, Pete was obviously, you know, playing for England and playing for Liverpool and that did mean a lot of time of away England camps, training camp, camps, pre-season. And yeah, there were, there were times where, you know, I think we wanted to be together more, but couldn't. But then, you know, you we, we kind of don't know any different, do we? You were very kind of understanding with that. It was like, you know, it's a short career, we're going to be together forever. Yeah. Um, and that was like, when I was playing for Liverpool and England, it was like, it's Champions League on a Tuesday. You know, I might be away on a Friday for the game Saturday. And I was, and then you might have another game, and then you might go away for England for ten days. Like, there's a lot of lot of travelling, isn't there? A lot of. But the flip side of that is, you know, most people who are working nine to five jobs or later, you know, people would be home in the middle of the day, and we'd spend the majority of the day mm, and true. night together. Mm -hmm. So you know, while there was a lot of time away, you know, we did compensate for that, like on a on a daily basis, where you come home from training, and you know, we'd spend a lot of quality off, time. Yeah. And you know, <clears throat> at that time, I was in Liverpool. So I was with my family and my mom, and like when Pete was away, I'd go and, and go and stay back at home. So that kind of softened the blow a bit. But I, I think it's okay. Like obviously, not if you, you go away. You don't for think like, it's okay if you go away for months at a time. But like I say, as long as you come home in the evening, I mean, I think it's people have if, if you work and you come together, and then you hopefully at weekends or you have some time together. If you're both stranded on a desert island, what would be the first thing you would argue about? I'd love to be stranded on a desert island. I would for for a while with each other or oh, alone. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I think that'd be fine. I'd be, I'd be that'd be fine. I think this is like a bit of a imbalance of our love. What? <laughs> <laughs> so you? I'm getting that vibe. What? It seems like I love you more than you love me I right don't think now. That's true at all. No, I think I, I said like you wouldn't want to be stuck on a desert island, would you? Let's be honest. Like, yeah, for a bit. Then what? We could make huts. We could build a village. Oh, yeah, because you're so handy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I you know, mean, we've got a donkey sanctuary. <laughs> yeah. All you need is a scart lead. <laughs> yeah. Do anything. <laughs> what would we argue about, though, if we we're on Desert Island? I think just, you know, that general together too long, yeah. get on your tits kind of vibe. Like him mouth breathing or you being brash. I think Ab tidying up the fucking island of Dumia, <laughs> didn't <laughs> well, Should we just uh, put that palm tree there? <laughs> well, Pete's like so that, that outline, I'm goes saying. over there. <laughs> <laughs> Martin, do you think that coconut goes with that, you know, <laughs> C? Yeah. <laughs> Great joke. Absolute belter joke. Just go and play golf, will you? Okay. <laughs> Okay, let's. Oh, come on, babe. I, we, we, can do, we can do a week on this. Oh, no, you can't be upset about that. Well, I quite enjoyed that oh, until I realised that you don't love me oh, at the end. I absolutely adore you. You know that. I think we should do more of them. Yeah, mm. they're awesome. Yeah, I enjoy that. Do you know, it's a nice little deflection from our own life and us just telling our story what people actually want to know about us. Yeah, and we get loads of these sent through. Uh, that's nice because, like you say, we, we, we come up with a plan and we talk about kind of what's going on, and but you don't, you know, there might be certain things that we leave out that people can ask us. Mm. So it works. Yeah. Cool story, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's complete twat, aren't you? <laughs> Reworded what I just said in a shit way. <laughs> was, God's sake. That was for our, for our listeners that aren't scouts. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. Right, let's go. Agony abs. Hi, both. Uh, why, oh, why do people think it is perfectly acceptable to bring the most unsociable lunches known to man into the communal office? Like fish. Oh, yeah. No one wants to smell your tuna and olive cheesy <laughs> bake that's been sitting in the fridge freezer for God knows how long to be nuked within an inch of its life and stink out the office for the rest of the afternoon. If I'd have wanted to be surrounded by the smell of rotten fish, I'd have stayed with my ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Don't be bitter now. A one-off occasion I could possibly forgive, but when it's happening week in, week out and making me feel nauseous for the rest of the afternoon, I think I need to take a stand. Whatever happened to the humble Heinz tomato soup and cheese and ham sandwich? Chaser. <laughs> or go wild and throw a bit of avocado on a chicken panini. Avocado. Avocado. Mm. I really don't care, just as long as I'm not subjected to smelling it. Maybe if I get an Abby-esque brutal response to this agony ab, I could strategically replay it in the office on full volume in hope they will listen to your pearls of wisdom. The possibilities are endless. Regards, the Earl of Sandwich. Earl of Sandwich. <laughs> Ugh. I don't mind the smell of food when it smells good. Mm. Do, do you remember? I mean? Do you remember when I used to come home from the canteen and oh. I'd had fish? And it wasn't. It was, it was on just my the clothes. canteen smell. When Pete used to play for um, play football, he used to come home and I, I had to strip him at the door <laughs> because I couldn't let him in the That's house. The only reason. <laughs> <laughs> this is very tasty. <laughs> I had to strip him at the door because it was close, stunk, and I was pregnant. The smells used to be the one thing yeah. that would send me over the edge. Like and, a bloodhound. Oh, Pete used to put deodorant on every morning. I'd be chucking my guts off. He'd, he'd go go downstairs and make this pesto pasta or whatever. <laughs> I'd be chucking my guts up. So I, I do get it. I do think people do not take a lot of consideration to the um, work colleagues when they are packing their lunch in the morning. So do it, guys. Yeah, that's true. Um, could you do a brutal response? I know that wasn't your natural response. Could you do a brutal one so he can play this out for, to help him in your yeah, But I love food, so I haven't got a massive issue okay. with this. All right, well, that's fine. What would your brutal response be? Listen up, colleagues. I'm fucking tired of your tuna fucking cheesy bake around the office. <laughs> I stink of it. You stink of it. Pack it in. Yeah. Use that. Well done. <laughs> well done. Okay, dear Pete and Abby, please may I have some advice. Is the following a sackable offence? My wife recently mm. purchased a new dining room table for our first proper home together. It's a thing of beauty. The table, not so much the wife right now. Oof, you can piss off. The sturdy, rustic, stained oak table should be proudly in the kitchen. Sadly, it's not. Someone who should remain nameless forgot to check a few minor details and the fine piece of workmanship is stuck in our garage. There is no way through the door. Any door, our only hope is Phil next door. Can you provide me a route through his garden? Can he rescue our dinner times? Can he rescue our marriage for that matter? Three months into its innings, the wedlock hangs in the balance, surely. Is this measurement madness worthy of a second chance? Is my wife a creative genius or a furniture fraud? Have either of you produced a similar misdemeanor? Regards, Ben. So what's he saying? He's going to dump his wife or not? So I think it's, from what I understand by it, it was a bit weirdly written, but from what I understand is he's bought, they bought a table, she's bought a table, Doesn't but she fit. hasn't measured the, the doors or whatever. So mm. they can't get it through the house, so it's stuck in the garage, I think. I did that the other day. Did you? <laughs> I ordered these bowls from this plate sh sh shop that I love online. But I ordered what I thought was a big salad bowl and it was like a little tiny dish that you put salt in. Like a ramekin. <laughs> yeah. It was a little tiny ramekin and I was like, oh, that'd be gorgeous. A big load of pasta in, you know, big salad, middle of the table. <laughs> that, that it's that big. <laughs> that's got a bit of oil and balsamic vinegar in it. Exactly. But no, I don't think that's a sackable offence. Nah. You know, I've done the same thing. I got a sofa in Portsmouth when I was on my own before I met you. I had a flat in Portsmouth, but I lived on a marina and my I bought a couch. We all know. I had no what we all know you lived on a marina when you were single. <laughs> <laughs> so what? Uh... Time my absolute life, seriously. <laughs> Marking how I'd give back as you go back to those days. Um but anyway, I got this couch and I couldn't obviously get through the door. So Kev the kit man, retired boxer, absolute unit, threw it on his back. And like, went up a ladder Fuck and man. put it through the double doors. What a G. What a G. Absolutely. I'd have a field they would these days, wouldn't they? I think if he's contemplating divorcing his wife over getting table measurement wrong, he should, 
he should be in the garage, not the bloody table. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Agreed. That's done. Fair enough. God, Pete, you, power. You, never, you never show to me if I make a mistake like that. I wouldn't shout at you. That's true. <laughs> You know, if I like. You'd shout at me, Because you don't want to <laughs> fucking kill you. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. I you don't make mistakes. <laughs> yeah. You'd shout at me 100%. Oh, yeah. If I, if I imagine I, imagine I just went rogue, right? And went, oh, I'm going to go couch shopping, bought a couch and got it wrong. Number one, you'd be like, why the fuck are you buying your own couches? <laughs> Number two, of course you got it wrong because you can't do it. Number three, never do that again. True. Sorry. Yeah. True. Agreed. It's just our roles, isn't it? <laughs> What, your couch shopping? No, just stick to your own lane. I'm happy not buying couches. Totally fine with it. Well, that's not entirely true. Because you once threatened if you're going to leave, if I got another animal, and you could buy your own sofa and it'd be amazing. <laughs> and I was like, it wouldn't. It'd be horrible. <laughs> did you hear that argument? I remember we did that one. We had a big argument, yeah. And, uh, and I said, I'm going out and buy my own couch. You went, your couch would be shit. <laughs> Slam the door, that was it. Oh, well, now we've got a lovely couch. Rowan. We have. Well, I enjoyed that pod. Yeah. I feel like you were a little bit giddy today. I was. I, I got the giggles halfway through. There was a few things that really tickled me and I struggled to get out of that kind of mindset. And you're hungry as well, I can tell. I am hungry, but like I say, it's, it's, it's good to be jovial rather than a, a mirror. You're not Go yourself on. and you haven't had your Snickers. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I actually really enjoyed the Ask Me Anything as well. Oh, I loved it. Honestly, listen, if you want to send in some more, it's thetherapycrouch at gmail.com. Shabba. <laughs> Shabba. <laughs> Shabba. <laughs>